Chris hit up Monkey Moto. Had been to the track a few times. He had played with his own suspension, but uh, he had really bad tire wear. And he didn't know necessarily what that meant, and he wanted to reach out to an expert to have someone understand what his problem is and make the right changes to both eliminate the poor tire wear and keep the bike handling pretty well. There are three aspects of suspension that we look at overall. We can break it down into further pieces. There's the preload, front and rear, and then the dampening, front and rear, and we can break those down into subcategories of rebound and compression. Rebound is the rate that the spring unloads. Compression is the rate that the spring compresses. And we can manipulate that by some valving and fluid controllers that allow us to either slow down or speed up those rates within a finite amount based on our realm of adjustment. We got the bike, I looked at it, did a little bit of a feel test. The feel wasn't too bad, but the tire wear definitely was bad. It had a cold tear. Along with the cold tear, there were the oscillations of the tire being overstressed, which is a suspension issue. The first thing we want to do there is check the sag settings. There's a healthy range of rider sag that we want to be at for suspension to work correctly on the bike, on the track, or on the road. There's a slight variance depending on the application but the baseline settings are pretty close. We look at the bike collectively, look at the front of the bike first and then the rear of the bike. And the reason is, if there's a major issue in the front of the bike, because the bike's moving forward, any issue is going to transfer itself through to the rear. There's an energy transfer from the front of the bike to the rear of the bike. Think of it like when you drop a pen, one side will hit a little bit soft, the side that hits second hits harder. And the reason is that energy transfer from the front of that pen hitting transfers through the rear. So it's the same thing with the motorcycle or car or any vehicle application moving in a direction. The front is going to translate kinetic energy through to the rear. Started checking the sag settings and sure enough, the front and the rear were both too soft. Front's too soft, it's not able to absorb all the energy it should. It's going to have a harsh bottom out and it's gonna transfer that energy to the rear, even if it doesn't bottom out. So we went ahead and got the front end from a sag standpoint dialed in. And then we went ahead and did the same on the rear. Motul makes an awesome tool, I believe it's called a sag master. It allows us to look at that data electronically and see where we started from and see where we ended in a methodical fashion. We had to stiffen both the front and the rear to get it to be within the numbers that we would consider healthy for motorcycle suspension. Once we got the bike balanced from a preload standpoint, because we stiffened the suspension from a damping standpoint, we have to compensate for that. When you add in preload or stiffen the springs, what happens is the rate that that spring unloads increases. We have to slow that down to be at the same rate of decompression that it was prior to us adding in more force, more preload into that spring. In order to do that, on the rebound standpoint, we have to tighten it down, go more clicks in, and get to a point to where everything is linear, to where the bike unloads at a smooth rate and does not want to unload so fast that it comes back down to settle again. We only want the bike to move once and be settled. You want the bike to be ready to handle the next bump as quickly and efficiently as possible. So if it's too slow, it won't get to the point where the suspension is able to handle another load by the time that next load comes, or if it's too fast, the bike will wanna oscillate before it settles to handle the next bump. So these are things that we're looking for as we're changing the rebound setting. From the compression standpoint, what we're really looking for is a bike that is compliant. One that allows us to use the full stroke of suspension, as well as be linear with brake application. We don't want a bike that dives uh, harshly. We want something that will allow us to have feel. So feel is probably the most important aspect of all of this. The numbers are a general setting, but what we're really looking for is feel. Depending on what surface we're on or what location we're riding at, even temperature, we will increase or decrease the amount of compression that we have to increase feel. We got the bike balanced. We got the damping settings when what I feel is a healthy range and we went out took the bike out, I got some heat into the tires, really started to push on the throttle, see how the bike handled under load, see how it felt like when it started to break loose a little bit, see how compliant it was. And then uh, once I really got some heat into it, I dove hard onto the brakes in the corner and really used threshold braking into the corner and used a healthy trail braking transition back onto the throttle mid corner. And that really gives me a good feel of where the bike is, not just for me, but anybody that's gonna be riding. We got Chris on the bike, took Chris out for a ride. Having the bike set up properly was a night and day change for him, which he highly enjoyed. The bike still felt compliant. Yeah. 
And this is huge because when we make massive changes like that, often it feels unnatural given that they already liked what they had. In this case, Chris, he's a very good rider, rides fast, rides on track. Mm -hmm. It's a testament to the science of what we do that shows that we can make those massive changes and still have something that is both compliant, enjoyable, and an improvement for a ride. This is Eugene with Hero Moto, working out of Monkey Moto. Definitely enjoy working with our partners over here. If you liked the video, if you learned something, like and subscribe for more. Take care. Sorry, I left the key in it.